Hey everybody, it's Josh Wagner, wandering to work. Uh, so I just left my house and I'm wandering to work. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, it's at wandering to work, uh, W-O-N-D-E-R, to work. Uh, Twitter, I don't post Twitter much, but, uh, and there's also a Facebook page, it's where I probably do most of my stuff. But uh, you're welcome to follow me anywhere on that. And uh, the point of the podcast, in case you haven't figured it out, is I'm just gonna talk about things I wondered about to work. So what am I wondering about today? Well, I wondered about a couple things. I thought maybe I'd wonder about aliens because some people have asked me about aliens. And I actually posted something in the Facebook group about that recently, but we'll save that for another time. Um, let see, make sure that my mic is doing good. Uh, so one of the things that I thought was interesting in the last week that I heard was from my therapist. Yeah, I, I take therapy because I need it, <laughs> just like a lot of people do. And uh, who almost hit a squirrel? Um, Never know what's going to happen on the way to work. So uh, one of the things that he said was that one of the biggest social changes of modern history or the last 2,000 years was the invention of, are you ready for it? The fireplace flew. The fireplace flew. The fireplace. And I'm like, what? And he told us that before the fireplace flew, and I might be getting that wrong, but something about the fireplace. Before the fireplace flew, everybody had to um, sit around the same fire in the castles. Even the even the wealthy people, the rich people, and the poor people, and the kings and the servants all had to sleep and live in the same room because there wasn't like a, there wasn't like a central heating system to the house like we have today. And what happened with the invention of the fireplace flew is that you all of a sudden could have individual fireplaces in your castle in your house, in your big house. And so the idea of everybody sleeping in the same room, which was, I guess, a very common thing, uh, was something that uh, changed. And now everybody had their own space. Uh, you know, if you were the queen, you had your chambers. If you were king, you had your chambers and that kind of thing. And, and this was the beginning of uh, people sleeping by themselves or in at least in couples. Uh, every, every other time, I guess, according to him, people would kind of sleep in big dog piles around the around the fire because there was only one place you could have a fire because the smoke would, you had to make sure that the smoke would go out the top of the building. Um, so I thought that was kind of interesting how that one little invention uh, changed everything. And of course, I like technology, but this isn't really a talk about technology. This isn't really a podcast about technology. It's really a, it's really a podcast about how things radically change when just a little tiny element is, is installed. And uh, I don't know if I talked about this in the first podcast, but I had a friend at, at Honda that, and it's just a friend of, fresh in my mind that she told me she was an engineer and when she, she said she'd move something one centimeter to the left, the whole car would change because everything was kind of connected together. And when he told us this thing about the fireplace where it, it went from people sort of sleeping communally and in one place, which probably happened for literally thousands, hundreds of thousands of years before this, to everybody sleeping apart or at least couples having their own room or or this or that, that it was this huge social change. And I thought to myself, what would it be like? Like if you go to like a beer hall in Germany, like there were these huge halls and that's where everybody slept. They slept in this big, I understand exactly what he's saying, right? Here in Columbus, we have the Hofbrau House. You can go to Hofbrau House in Munich too. And it would be this, it's this big hall. They would put the big fire in the middle and everybody would kind of sleep around the big fire inside of the building. And uh, it was, it's kind of, it's kind of, I understand it. So what kind of huge revolutionary change that was? Because I can't imagine like sleeping in dog piles around fires. I just can't imagine that because I have my own room. I have my own bed. I've had my own room and bed for, you know, my whole life really. I, you know, I, I've never had a, an instance where I didn't have my own room, my own space. And I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what would happen if I had to share it with like 10,000 other people. It's not entirely true. I slept in hostels in Europe. And I tell you what, I do have an idea of what that was like because you have to smell, not to be gross here, but this is exactly what it is. You have to smell everybody's farts, you have to smell everybody's feet, you have to smell everybody's dirty clothes, you have to smell everybody's, or hear everybody's snoring and farting and dirty clothes. Anyway, so I do kind of have some idea about what that's like to kind of have to sleep in communal situations. And uh, at the same time, imagine I imagine you didn't need sex education because you just learned it there. Uh, you didn't need the internet. You learned the birds and the bees from Aunt Bird and Uncle Bee. So, um, you know, it was just kind of interesting. So what I'm wondering about, I'm really not wondering about that. I, I'm sort of wondering about that. Like, what would it be like? 
But I'm like wondering what else like we don't understand that changed the whole course of history. And obviously, we can start from the beginning with the internet and we can get in a little traffic, but there's it's very safe for me to do this because my traffic, my commute is very easy in the morning. Uh, I run into a little bit of traffic and then and then I get on 71 North and I, I don't have anybody there. But uh, yeah, what else? Like obviously the, the internet or the telephone or the automobile. I mean, I, I can't imagine like running the Civil War. I, so I'll get to the Civil War and why it's on my mind here in a second. But like they didn't have, well, maybe they had telegraphs, maybe, but probably all that stuff was destroyed. So what did they do? hand carry letters to people like how did Lincoln run the war how did Ulysses S. Grant run the war or any of those other generals how did General Lee do that like how did he keep his troops in line or like the cotton gin like that's why it's on my mind like the cotton gin they say is the reason by Eli Whitney is the reason the Civil War started in the first place is because it uh it super monetized the um it super monetized all the uh all the plantation all the cotton plantations and so they needed more slaves etc etc um, I think it was actually states' rights. Uh, you know, the Thomas Jefferson, you know, the Kentucky something act. I don't know. Or, or just the invention of the federal government, like what we have now, or, or the invention of, um, I don't know, fire, like, or, or the printing press, or any of these things. Like, there's this one book that I really like called Sapiens. I'm probably going to refer to it quite a bit. It's one of my top favorite books. Um, Sapiens is a very, very cool book about the history of of humanity. It's a very long book, but it's very well worth the read. I'm actually thinking about reading it again. And one of the things, of course, that revolutionized humanity was farming. Farming. Like, we don't think about farming. Like, we just go to the store and stores, of course, are a thing that revolutionize things. But, like, farming is this huge thing. And how did they discover farming? Well, they were hunter-gatherers and they would probably walk from place to place carrying all their stuff. And they realized that the paths that they were walking, they were dropping seeds. This is according to the Sapiens book. And they're like, oh, if we put these seeds here, then things will grow and we don't have to move around. And so they stop moving. They stop being nomads. They stop being uh, hunter-gatherers. They started being farmers. And of course, that changed our whole physiology because our physiology is really built for hunter-gathering. You know, we're really, we're, we're able to run and move long distances by foot better than any animal uh, over long distances. And that's, I mean, there's this tribe in Africa. They still do it. They run down antelope. They run them down, like, because humans can run farther than antelopes. So they just run until the antelope kind of falls over. So that's, I mean, that's far and few between. But, I mean, just the invention of farming, like, changed everything. Like, our cholesterol went up and our health got worse. Um, we lived longer, I guess, maybe. I don't know. Um, we started building towns and then cities and then countries. Uh, it's just it's just kind of amazing. And I, I, I'm just sort of wondering what else, like, what has happened? Like, we might not even understand what has happened? What has been created? What little tiny tweak has happened to the culture? Either it's a language culture or a political culture, like when Constantinople was built, you know, and all the Greeks went east and all the Latin speakers stayed in Rome. Like, that's a huge deal. Or the Revolutionary War or any of these kind of things. Like, so please share that. If, if you know of anything that, like, changed the course of history, the creation of iron from bronze or, or the understanding of economy with gold and silver that goes way back by the way I think economy stuff is very interesting as well like you know bartering turned into essentially you know um, essentially a, a gold standard I mean gold's been the standard for thousands and thousands of years it's kind of, and I, I heard how it happened and I'm not that'll be another podcast but um, just so that's what I'm wondering about today is like what's the uh, what are the things that changed us fundamentally that we don't even think about on a day-to-day -day basis. Medicine, like antibiotics, penicillin. I mean, who would be alive today if we didn't have penicillin? If we didn't have the telephone, I probably wouldn't have this car. I mean, who knows what, what would happen? Radio, the atomic bomb. I mean, all sorts of things like change the radical course of history. Um, and I'm sort of wondering about what those are. So that's what I'm wondering about today on the way to work. Uh, there's traffic, but you know, you can see I'm not going very fast, so that's fine. And I keep a nice car length. It's at least four feet between me and the next car up. I'm just kidding. It's about three car lengths, but that's how I always drive. I drive like my dad. So uh, tell me in the comments uh, what you think. I'll, maybe I'll link the book Sapiens to the, to, the, um, to the comments and to the description and stuff, and you can go buy that book, and maybe we'll have a Sapiens book club someday. Um, all right.
This is Josh Wagner. I'm wandering to work. See you later. Bye.